came from a Salvation Army family and um, I was working with a, a friend and got to know her very well and she wanted me to go to uh, one of Butlin's holiday camps and my parents were very much against it but because she was so much older than I was and she was a good living girl my, th my parents felt that they could let her let me go and I went and I had a marvellous time and we were they kept on coming people had to go in for competitions all the time and I wasn't going in for any competition and then they were doing this modeling competition and my friend was saying go on you ought to go in for that and I was saying no I'm not going in for it and and then they were saying come on come on you must go in for it so I did went in for it and I felt very self-conscious and I stood there with 12 other girls and when the competition was over and the number and we all had a number and I, my number was number 12 and they were saying number 12 and I stood there looking around the row to see who number 12 was. And they were saying, it's you, we fooled, it's you. <laughs> so that's how it all started. And the first prize was three weeks course with Lucy Clayton in London. Well, of course, I wasn't allowed to go to London. But then Lucy Clayton later on came to Cardiff to train some models. And I joined her school and um, I took it from there. And then I joined an agency. And... Uh, it was just growing and growing on me. I was enjoying it very much. I can remember first going to James Howell's and we did a few shows for them. They were very, very careful. And we had to go to each department and select something. The buyer would help us choose something to, which would suit us. And each buyer, there was Miss Gill in the uh, millinery department and there was Miss Welsh in the suits department and I can't remember the name of the lady that was in the sh in the shoe department because we we were fitted out with everything um, hats we always had to wear a scarf over our heads to put on and off which I've never stopped doing for myself because it's it's a marvelous idea and they had their own theater at the top of Howells in those days and it was a very exciting show to do but we had to be awfully careful how we spoke to our manager who was Mr. Fear, and we did fear him, <laughs> and uh, we had. A, he was very, very, very fussy with us. And I remember one day, um, they had a job that rearranging us on the stage, and something wasn't going right. And I, I made a suggestion, and I was very quickly told off that it was his job, not mine. <laughs> and I put me, put me in my place, and I remembered after that to hold my tongue. But one day that does stand out in my mind, we were modelling in the city hall and we had to go into Howells and collect the garments. And I was walking out of Howells in order to go into Mr. James's car, who was in charge of a um, certain area. But he was taking us, some of us over to the city hall with our garments. And um, I was walking through the door with all these garments over my arm and uh, suddenly I was arrested by the security man and he said excuse me madam but where are you going with those garments and uh, he thought <laughs> I was stealing them I think I had to explain to him that I was taking them over to the car with Mr James so oh, I'm sorry he said that uh, I had to stop you which was that was very funny you had to be out exactly as the music stopped you had to be in the in the behind the flats ready to step forward and um, the one one um, dresser was saying to the other can you come and help me I can't this fix I can't fix this zip it's stuck it's stuck eventually it all, all went well and I I was able to get out and as I walked down the the catwalk I heard murmurs and laughter and then I did a, a, a turn and there was more laughter and I couldn't understand. I was looking down at my shoes. Have I got the odd shoes on? I couldn't understand. Everything was right as far as I was concerned. Why was all this laughter all of a sudden? And so there were mirrored uh, pillars. So I managed to get myself to a mirror and did a, dub did a double turn so that I could see the back of myself. And there was a placard on the back of me. And because they all called me, Re this gown was so beautiful, and it was regal, and they called me Regal Rini, and they put pinned this onto my back, 
and I was really, really, well, of course, I started to laugh. When the audience saw I was laughing with them, they, they clapped and it was, it went off very well. But the, we were told off, but I, I was innocent because I didn't know anything about it. When I look back over the years, they were the most, they were the happiest times, except for the fact that I was conscious of the fact that I was leaving the girls and Alan to cope, but they loved it. They came to came to many of the shows and they thought it was great to have a mummy that was modeling. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I was very fortunate in being in a team of very good, nice girls. And we all got on extremely well together. And we never forgot who we were, that we were just ordinary girls showing these lovely clothes off. And it really was a, a wonderful occasion each time. Mm -hmm.